so good morning everybody today's topic is multiplexing and specifically we will uh, discuss about multiplexing or time division multiplexing of pcm signals i guess you have already studied about frequency division multiplexing in an earlier course okay uh, please note that uh, uh, the general block diagram that i had given at the beginning for a digital communication system did not include or so explicitly any block say labeled as multiplexer or demultiplexer can anybody confirm it was missing perhaps there was no such block really the reason was that that was after all a hypothetical uh, scheme so as to talk about the major building blocks there and that was primarily uh, meant for a single user single pair of users really okay so uh, many other uh, important signal processing modules were not included there because the idea also was to give a simple picture at the beginning so multiplexing is one such uh, operation which uh, may be included in a digital transmission scheme okay or communication system if there are multiple users okay whose data have to be sent to the same destination okay so i leave it for you to uh, insert a block called multiplexer in the transmit chain and a demultiplexing unit in the receive chain as per your common sense let me know if you have any doubt in fact the position may vary a little bit about where you want to actually multiplex the signal anyway uh, multiplexing has been there in uh, analog as well as digital communication systems and as you may be knowing uh, one major uh, application area of multiplexing demultiplexing has been that of telephone yes telephone communication system okay where traditionally uh, the frequency division multiplexing has been favored of late time division multiplexing of digital or time discrete time signals has been preferred because of ease of implementation better performance better utilization of uh, resource etc etc so here i am almost directly starting with one standard which is popularly known as t1 digital system okay and this scheme or this standard has been popular in the us okay originally it was developed by at&t uh, and it was used by it has still being used by at&t so broadly this uh, standard is followed in us and a few other countries like korea canada etc no no in india we broadly follow which standard for most of the things IT. anybody yes it recommended standard which is again uh, used in most of the european countries except a few countries in isolation so uh, here is a part of the scheme where i have noted the input discrete um, input signals s1 s2 up to s24 what i mean by this is that the again this uh, standard is focused for telephone systems basically okay so these are individual uh, signal from individual subscribers telephone okay and then the signal is low pass filtered and sampled okay this is a conceptual diagram where the low pass filtering is shown okay so that uh, you get a band limited signal at this point for each signal can you quickly tell me the specification of this low pass filter because it's the specific voice, uh, speech band of 300 to 3.4 the same one so 300 to 3.4k and each of the filter is identical really so they have the same specification okay and then i have brought in a switch here okay it is a commutator kind of switch conceptually what it does is it samples the output of filter 1 this is LPF number 1 if you like you can number them it samples this this LPF output then goes to the next LPF output samples its output and then goes to the next one and like that it samples the output of the 24th LPF what happens then 
in the next interval in the same interval after the same interval really it goes back to the first one really okay so if i try to visualize the samples at this point in the same interval after the same interval that means whatever time is whatever time is given for switching from filter output 1 to filter output 2 okay within the same time it switches from filter output 24 back to 21 this way okay which has not been which has not been very explicit in this diagram really okay so it samples at uniform rate that's the point okay so i'm calling this operation as switching operation now can you visualize the output here how will the output look like yeah so over a period of time we can say You may get a sample from the first user, okay, then a sample from the second user, then a sample from the third user, and like that, I have broken the line here. Some sample from the twenty-fourth user, isn't it? And then, in the next sampling interval, so to say, you get the sample from the first, okay, and the process repeats. Yes, please. The sampling rate is eight kilo samples per second. For, yeah. So, for interval between the samples sampling rate, rate one to is no, the, the sampling rate at the output of the first filter is 8 kilo samples per second. Why? It has to be like that. Yes. So, the overall time that you get, okay, to sample this 24 channels is the same as 125 microsecond. Is that okay? We call this a frame okay so the yeah the frequency of the gcm coder yes should be 24 times yes right okay frame is individual s1 or s2 or s2 s4 no no collection of collection of them each signal is sampled at 8 psp yes so that is the necessity because the signal is band limited to 3.4k, isn't it? So the output of the first low pass filter must be sampled at the interval of 125 microsecond or at 8 kilo samples per second, okay? And in the process of multiplexing, etc., you cannot compromise with the quality of the first signal or any other uh, signal really, okay? So you may be uh, sampling n number of users' output really, but you must get back to this point after 125 microsecond. So that effectively you get samples from this first output at the rate of 8 kilo samples per second, okay. Now this time duration is 125 microsecond, okay. And the important point is that after this interval, again you must sample the first user's output, fine. So within 125 microsecond, you have in this as per the standard, 24 samples are discrete time samples are being inserted over a du time duration of 125 microsecond. okay. So obviously this switch has to operate at a fast rate and the sample rate at this input point of this compression and PCM coding unit is how much? 24 into 8. Yes, isn't it? So it is higher. So this PCM coder has to operate at a higher bit rate, at a higher clock rate, etc. This is a duration, okay. I think I will discuss more specifically about frame sometime later really. See this story repeats. If you look at this whole scheme, after the first sample is uh, sampled once again, in the next interval the second sample will be sampled, second, second user sec second sample and like that this process will continue. So if the process is understood over a time duration of 125 microsecond, we know the similar story is going to be repeated, okay. When it is like that we say this time interval as if it is a frame duration. It, this is a frame in which all different things happen and once the frame is over, in the next frame similar things have to happen. Okay, so frame is a concept wherein uh, we specify it in, term, in a time, time duration and whatever processing is described in one frame will be repeating in the next frame. 
that is the basic idea of a frame though because of practical reasons there are also definitions of super frames hyper frames etc let us not worry much about them at the moment okay so if i tell you or if you describe one frame to me i know that similar thing is going to happen the sample values will be different obviously but the similar thing is going to happen in the next frame so description of one frame completely describes how this whole process is operating over a long period of time okay so the minimum period time duration whose description is sufficient to describe the whole thing is essentially called as a frame time frame is that okay here i have used see for this user this arrow leads to this output end really see in one frame duration you must take one sample from user 1 similarly one sample from user 2 okay in fact if you think here all these signals are band limited to the same bandwidth okay so one sample from each output is fine you may have a more general situation where the signals are not band limited to the same bandwidth s1 signal from user 1 may be band limited to this s2 signal from user 2 may be band limited over a larger bandwidth in that case you may like to pick up more number of samples in a frame from that higher bandwidth signal okay but this one is a standard which is easier to understand and where the bandwidth for all the signals is the same because again this standard is basically meant for speech kind of signal if you are thinking of tomorrow some kind of multiplexing uh, scheme where you would like to multiplex a telephone grade speech signal where you would also like to multiplex a good quality voice signal you would also like to multiplex good quality uh, music signal or stereo phonic audio signal then you will find that the bandwidth will not be the same for all the kind all services really and there may be different number of samples per frame at this point at this respective point in your multiplexing scheme okay and one point is that in this kind of multiplexing scheme it should never so happen that in this process you are not picking up even one sample from one user you must pick up at least one sample from one user in a frame otherwise what will happen because you will be under sampling this signal and then pardon it will like the very necessary for the other person to know at the other side of the like at the decoding side that is a different issue really, we will we'll briefly no, talk about it. Like it is working at uh, 24 times the frequency. Right. So, then if it is shifts one, mm -hmm. then uh, like it will be available 155 microsecond before it, it got the new sample. So, it, it may just take the old sample again. Well, uh, 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 okay, okay, uh, what you are visualizing you will, uh, may be the case, yes. Okay, in practice that may be the situation if that is called slip. Okay, if this uh, switch commutator switch slips to consider this output really, that is one kind of problem which may be there, is rather occasional. My question was uh, even simpler. See, in a frame, because the way I tried to explain a frame, whatever story is described for a frame, the same story should repeat in the next frame. Okay, considering this, at least one sample must be picked up from each user output is my point because if you for example if i if you decide to sample the output of the first user every alternate frame then see one sample will be there from user 1 in the first frame no sample from user 1 in the second frame okay then another next sample of user 1 in the third frame like that then fundamentally the frame description is not correct the frame description should have been the one including 2 into 125 microsecond or 250 microsecond one which simple repetition of which would tell me the exact story really so, sir, uh, why it is incorrect like you have one three uh, the odd first and then the event it's basically you are taking 24 samples in a particular frame if you increase the frame 
if you if you think like you are taking alternately alternately you consider the uh, there are four sources there you take one three two four or one two three four it actually makes any difference no see there are twenty four users I mean see if you take the if you sample the odd users output first and then even users output first then even users output my point is that the frame should have a description for all the users no users should be left really so your frame duration will be over frame description will be complete only when you have told how the odd outputs are sampled as well as how the even outputs are sampled really you should not think of a frame describing only how you are sampling the odd outputs or signal outputs really that's an incomplete description that means that is a fundamental definition of a frame really whatever description is given for one frame if i go on repeating that i don't miss lose out anything each user is represented duly okay now so this if you just think a little bit this 125 microsecond is actually the minimum duration of the frame you could not for this given scenario of 24 voice users each with band limitation up to 3.4k you could not have a frame less than 125 microsecond could you that will depend upon the uh, sampling rate of the entire transmission the sampling rate is standardized to 8 kilo samples so should it be exactly equal to Okay, a little bit later. My point is that could it be say 80 microsecond? Hmm? Right. Could it be more than uh, 125 microsecond? So it can be less, but not more. It can be less. It can be less if we over sampling. No, up, no, up to this it is fixed. Sampling rate here is 8 kilo samples per second. Why should we over sample? I mean, if we are talking about PCM, multiplexing PCM signal, then there is no need to over sample really. Let the sampling rate be 8 kilo samples per user. I am talking about frame time description. Sir, what will if we do uh, 80 microseconds, then we will uh, take the same sample twice sometimes. Because the, will the, sec the sample will the, is present. Will the second sample be available after, after 80 microseconds? Uh, the, the second sample will be available after 25 Only. microseconds. Hmm. But we have already uh, arrived there after 80 microseconds. So right. So we will get the same sample back again. Right. So if we are able to process in that fashion that the same sample. Uh, we are eradicating. Hmm. Then, then it won't be a problem. Really? But uh, why, why has such unconvenience? Really? Better go for uh, exactly 125. It cannot be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, better description. Any other views? So, why so much to in a signal that doesn't contain any any information? Any information. Eighty microseconds. There is. No information contained in the signal. Right. So, what about 120? Yeah, S1 and S2 after 24 are continuously varying analogically. Right. And they are passed to LPS. Right. Okay. And then we are connected to the switch. Right. So, if we come back after 80 microseconds, we are getting a new sample. We are not getting an old sample. So, that essentially means that. But that new value is not necessary. Yes. So it is not necessary, but it basically means that we are sampling at a much higher. Yeah, even if you sample after 10 microseconds, you will get another sample. No, but it means you are sampling at a higher frequency, not 8 kilo samples. Per right, right. So then, therefore, for 8 kilo samples. So per when the sampling rate is fixed at 8 kilo samples per second, so okay, this value, the minimum one is 125 microsecond. It's only a different language that we are inter trying to interpret basically. In fact, when he said that okay, the switch will come back after 80 microsecond. How can he get another value really when the sampling rate is 125 microseconds? He gets the same value if it is held, isn't it? The switch may come back after 80 microseconds really, but it gets the same thing because it is being sampled at 8 kilo samples per second. So the next change at the sampler output will be available at 125 microseconds. So that way, this 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 it is not shown explicitly to avoid complexity really. This this when I say that this is this switch is a conceptual one really. If you think about this implementation, yeah. If we are going for digital multiplexing, this is a digital multiplexing. Scheme. So basically, Time the division. output and the one is a digital. Output one is a oh. digital. 
if we have a encoder previously because uh, if you are going to sample if you are going for analog multiplexing it would be more uh, is his question understood yes. what he is uh, asking for is essentially how this uh, this operation is being carried out perhaps okay Italy it would be very easy to do when yeah. we go for analog mm -hmm. we increase the more complexity well, uh, this is a, a different aspect really, let me, uh, uh, we'll, uh, we may discuss it later on if it comes to really. It is like this, historically uh, things were analog actually, okay, uh, but uh, the cost was more, the bulk, the size was more and it was not that efficient ultimately. So now the trend is to implement it in digital domain, but here I have not focused on the implementation issue. Okay, I'm trying to bring out the conceptual issues first, really. Okay, so th because of that, I'm not showing how this switching arrangement, this actual sampling, holding, and then multiplexing arrangement is to be implemented. That's the secondary part, really. So ADC level comes at which side? This side or that? Pardon? ADC. I have shown the PCM coder here. See. The detail implementation is related to how you are implementing your compression unit, okay, which can be implemented using analog circuitry, which can also be implemented using digital uh, memory blocks, etc., etc. Okay, so implementation is not uh, being emphasized here. First is the concept, basically. So, so, so far as the concept is concerned, this frame duration typically is 125 microsecond when the sampling rate is fixed, okay, but it could be yes, please. Eight plus samples per second. But the source figures is 3.4. 3.4. This is a uh, speech signal. Uh, uh, let me write telephone users, uh, telephone uh, signals. Okay, this is a signal from telephone users. Okay, this T1 digital system, this multiplexing arrangement is meant for telephone communication system. So, these signals S1, S2, they are coming from telephone users, individual telephone subscribers, okay. So, the signal is band limited to 3.4K, 300 to 3.4K. So, which, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Which, uh, reducing the frame duration might help us in a situation where uh, there might be tendency of uh, slipping of one of those In suppose 125, so the duration becomes 2.5. Yeah. Then, effectively, Right. So his point can be, uh, I mean, you can try once again, isn't it? Yeah. So his point is that uh, it may be a good idea to reduce this frame duration so that now I'm changing the language a little bit in an equivalent manner so that over a given interval of 125, if I give you 125 microsecond to sample at least once each of these user, as you are suggesting that you will sample within 80 microsecond and check back if there was any slippage, so that in the next round that slip value can again be inserted here. So that that is the way you will like to utilize 125 microsecond. Really. Just uh, it's not even 80, it has to be 65. Something like that. Half, half, half of that kind of way, which is equivalent to oversampling really. Now the point is that uh, you have to balance many things. How costly is a slippage? How costly is the slip of one sample? Okay, for spe for speech is how probable it is, and how costly it is for a speech kind of service. Okay, and whether the probability of slippage is more when you are trying to operate a digital circuit at a higher clock rate. See, when you said that, okay, let it, let me design it for 64 microsecond really, I mean, uh, I mean 62.5 microsecond, I mean you are essentially talking about high speed circuitry to be, uh, which have to be used here really, that perhaps increases the probability of slippage, okay. So taking into all these things, I will say that do not worry, use this uh, 125 microsecond to full advantage really, okay, go for the circuitry which will operate more reliably, there is no point in, I mean, uh, at least for speech kind of signal, no point in, dis I mean, disturbing this arrangement really. And hence, 125 microsecond is, as it is called, is a minimum duration, frame duration. Minimum because one could design multiple of that, integer multiple of this as a frame duration, okay, for some special reason really, where uh, 
within a frame there could be more than one sample okay but to take care of certain other issues a few more extra features could be added there over a longer period i mean so this is the minimum duration uh, the frame duration could be multiple of 125 microsecond in general when you read later on some multiplexing scheme not only for ground telephone system but for other systems say using satellites etc you will find that pardon no not maximum no i could design a frame of n times 125 microsecond so that is possible it's possible within one frame i would take say uh, uh, two samples from each so one every every 125 microsecond not to disturb your signal property i would come back twice sir we are talking about time here more time means that means your less time no i'll sample at 8 kilo samples per second i'll include two samples in a frame that is equivalent to over sampling twice this not over sampling i'm not changing the sampling rate this is changing your frame description i am just changing the frame duration i am considering i am describing my frame as 250 microsecond so by simple calculation we can say there will be two samples 125 interval each from each user okay there may be a different kind of reason for this approach that's what is my point here really. okay if we what we'll see that for this kind of multiplexing arrangement as he was trying to indicate basically it is not only sufficient to sample this individual users and put them together and transmit there is an issue of synchronization and for telephone kind of signal if you again uh, think a little bit this signal though i'm saying this is a voice a speech signal okay at this point speech sample but actually in a telephone system you know there will be other kind of signals like when you dial some dial tone goes you get a ring back you get a uh, engage tone various kinds of tones and other uh, signals are there really so those those are to be accommodated Sir, yes please in 250 microsecond hmm. if you have similar to 250 right that means you are taking one sample in 250 microsecond no two samples i'll take two sample from a particular user okay the samples will be spaced 125 so microsecond apart uh, we are sampling at the same of 8 kilo samples right but uh, where is the possibility in which we are uh, sampling at uh, more than 8 kilo no we, we won't sample at uh, more than 8 kilo samples why why is the signal property is not disturbed if i sample at 8 kilo samples why should i unnecessarily increase the sampling speed increasing the sampling speed inverts lot of problems really in implementation and it is fine when you when you sample at a higher speed you generate more data you have to transmit all of them really you may need more uh, bandwidth etc okay so each frame is frame yeah 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 it's expected expected it is expected it is not necessary for designing a frame but yes it is expected yes right yeah see i mean if i uh, use this system in a tel a scheme in a telephone system is it not that you would like to establish the path you would like to ring up somebody okay and then you'd like to get an engage tone or dial tone i mean uh, uh, ring back from there and then you will start talking uh, transferring your uh, voice isn't it so this initial signaling and after your conversation is over you put the handset on the cradle isn't it then also something ha happens the pulse goes and informs somewhere in the exchange that okay the call is over so that the circuit is disconnected and the circuit is given to some other uh, pair uh, no uh, you have not been dis uh, you do not know anything about the telephone system isn't it Bit about the tone dialing and all that. Okay, fine. So, uh, no, it is it's like this. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, somebody has to know. Somebody has to take some extra lead, really. That's good. Yeah. No, it is not that it has to be. My point is that it may be for a different kind of reason. Okay, I think I'll uh, I'll not talk more about that. Really, we'll talk about that sometime later, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. We are defining the frame as the minimum uh, time interval which repeats. Yeah. So then, if we define it 250 microsecond as one frame, so right. we have two samples. Right. Then basically two samples for the from the voice part, really voice users. Okay. But when you when you think about the whole scheme of transmission, you have to take care of certain other issues. One of them is the various signals. The other one is something some signal uh, signaling uh, provision for signaling has to be there in your multiplexing scheme otherwise how the signals have to be transferred how the dialing uh, operations have to be uh, transferred there similarly the other important issue as he was trying to say is that of synchronization okay 
I mean, it is not not only the story is not finished after they multiplex them. At the other end, the things have to be uh, cleaned up appropriately. Really, for that, a synchronization has to be done appropriately. So, because of all these, we can say some kind of overhead will be there, and this overhead we would like to minimize. We would we would like to transmit the bare minimum amount of supporting information, which will help me in transferring this. Uh, 24 voice channels smoothly. So, in view of that, sometimes a frame is defined as integer multiple of 125 microsecond also, but not in this T1. Let me come back to T1 system. Okay. As per this T1 digital system, it is like this. Okay. And then let me complete this part first. So, the output, if you try to see at this point, will be the samples from individual users and the first samples will will obtain the second sample from the first user after 125 microsecond and then we will have again for the sake of uh, optimized design you can use okay one compression unit and one pcm coder instead of one could argue as there was some uh, 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 point really that instead of doing it at one place one could also use individual compression and pcm coder output coder along with the voice individual user do you get me so, one uh, compression unit and a PCM coder for user 1, another compression unit and PCM coder for user 2 and like that 24 one. Which one would be a better one? This one, this one provided it operates at that high rate, is not it? So, the tendency is to have concentrate the operation at one place minimum number of places so that you save in hardware saving cost and then you get the multiplexed output. So, can you visualize what is the multiplexed output, how would it look like against time? Yes same binary sequence random binary sequence okay now this pcm coder again is 8 bits per sample okay so one sample is coded to 8 bits simple pcm coder say with compression algorithm equivalent is once for one sample 8 bits will be used and then from this diagram we can see that if the first users first sample is taken first then the pcm coder will give me 8 bits representing this sample the next 8 bit will be representing the sample from the second user and like that. So, here you will have groups of 8 bits coming one after another okay. and each group of 8 bit will represent one sample from the corresponding user. Now, the first group of 8 bit should represent first user sample, the last group of 8 bit should represent the last user sample. Is that okay? Any change in sequencing here is not allowed because that may lead to problem while getting back the signal. Now, in addition to this, one extra provision is made. In this group of 24 into 8 bits, one extra bit is added. I will talk about that later on. So, in a frame, there will be 24 into 8 plus one number of bits. Anyway, that is the multiplex output it can go to the for the subsequent portion in the transmission scheme that means it may go to the channel equivalently okay is, is the order reversed or anything pardon is the order of samples reversed where the, uh, with respect to the initial sampling and the no no it should not be no reason so this is for user 1 first packet of 8 bits the second group of 8 bits is for from user 2 the last packet is from user number 24 and then again in the next frame there will be one extra bit at the beginning usually of the frame if the frame is being transmitted in this direction then one extra bit is put here i mean at the beginning of the frame okay for some special reason i'll tell you so and then the next frame starts it's yes just like the start bit it's not simply a start bit really uh, uh, one this is uh, use it is called as frame synchronization bit frame synchronization bit i'll, I'll talk about that okay so, the whole stream of binary sequence is then launched to the subsequent portion of the transmission scheme. Okay. So, what if we do the uh, hmm. multiplexing mm -hmm. after the signal S1 itself? Hmm. So, we are feeding a PCM coded output. Right, that is what I said. Uh, yeah, you can you can you can generate similar bit stream here, but you will be needing 24 uh, units of PCM coders, compression uh, unit and comp uh, PCM coders instead of one unit that I am using here. The difference is that th this unit has to operate at a faster clock, okay. but this saves in cost. There is another reason, subtle reason. Anyway, 
Now this is the remaining portion to describe the whole scheme of transmission and reception. So from the channel at the uh, receiver end, this is the, if this is the receive section, Rx side let me say, from the channel you get that sequence stream. Okay. So here you get that binary sequence stream and this is taken into the com compression unit, compression here is the expansion unit basically, is a compander unit basically and the PCM decoder. To be very specific in detail, there will be one synchronization unit as well, frame sync unit. which will the frame sync unit will operate on the first bit of the frame. That first bit is something additional which has been added for some special purpose. Okay. And this frame synchronization unit will ensure that the first packet, if I now try to draw the packets here, I mean packet means group of 8 bits, okay. that group of 8 bits that has been, that have been received that first bit have been has been taken out in this frame sync unit. This is actually meant for, it is from user 1 meant for a specific destination, is not it? This for user <coughs> 2, from user 2 meant for another destination, okay. So let me assume for simplicity again that this S1 signal was meant for this user, okay. S2 signal was meant for this user. This frame synchronization unit, okay, ensures that once it is decided somehow that S1 has to come to this point, S2 has to come to this point, this frame sync unit from the frame it takes out this group of 8 bits, it sends it there. The second group of 8 bits, it channelizes there. That means it synchronizes effectively once the source destination pairs have been established somehow have, are known. This synchronization of the second switch, a similar kind of switch, similar to what I was showing in the multiplexer, synchronization of this switch with the other switch is carried out effectively by this frame synchronization unit. So that the first packet is actually delivered to this point, second packet is actually delivered to this point. So the rotation of this commutator, this switch is dictated after this frame synchronization unit operates properly. Yes. Sir, uh, is there uh, any operation done over the signal to demark the first bit, first byte and the second byte? No. No, no. Because the first byte comes in the first frame second byte comes in the second frame as per this T1 scheme. No, uh, like uh, which has to be given to the first user then to the second user. Mm, no demarcation. So know that the starting 8 bit of a such a big sample right. is for S1 and the next. Uh, next 8 bits. Is so what is detected? This frame synchronization unit detects the, the beginning of a frame right. and then it knows the what sequence in which they have the bytes have been arranged. Okay. Sir? Yeah. So it is not necessary that all the 24 users will be um, uh, simultaneously working. So it is unnecessary to take samples which will be wasting that sample. Okay, good point. His point is that here is a standard which says that multiplex from 24 users. His point is that there may not be 24 users, there may be 10 users, but even then uh, should we uh, sample this 24 users output? The answer is yes. Okay. The reason is interesting which I was uh, bypassing basically is where exactly you will be using this multiplexing arrangement if you think. I uh, will very briefly try to uh, uh, just mention, see in the telephone system, I mean if you look at uh, your nearby telephone arrangement, how is it? You have a local exchange, is not it? Okay. and individual subscribers are all connected to the local exchange. Am I correct? Like our 
and these are bidirectional links, isn't it? You can talk, you can listen. Usually they are wires. <coughs> Sorry. Like in our Hisley exchange, there are several thousand such lines. There are several thousand subscribers are connected to this local Hisley exchange. Okay. Each of them has got a permanent connection made to the exchange. The connection from individual user to the exchange is permanent. Okay. Now, when you make a long distance call beyond this service area, local area, when you make a call to say Calcutta or Mumbai or any other place, I mean is it that you have a dedicated line from your, if you are the preferred user number one, okay, do you have a permanent connection like this one all through to the local exchange at Mumbai say, you do not have, but that you know, is not it. Suppose you are trying to reach user number 1 prime okay, in Mumbai, that is your desired connection. This user is connected through where to his local exchange, where or wireless material. These connections are permanent, this connection is permanent, but what about the connectivity between this your Hisley exchange and this Mumbai exchange? Any suggestion? Uh, Pardon? That may be one or two lines, but not one line. Yeah. So his session is one or two channels, maybe from his lead to Mumbai. Uh, Mumbai means a specific uh, that local exchange, Mumbai local exchange. I mean, in some way. Mm -hmm. So he predicts some lot of multiplexing arrangement. Yes, there was another. Lot of more centers in between. More centers in between. Okay. In fact, this uh, telephone system it is called hierarchy. Okay? It is a very interesting topic, it is a very involved one really. That is one reason we are not covering here. For us, it is sufficient to tell you that this intermediate stations need not be only multiplexers. They have got many other purposes to show, purposes to serve really. But basically, your line from this exchange point onwards is not certain, let me tell you that. Only a minimum number of a few number of lines are connected from this Hisley exchange to the bigger exchange. That bigger exchange may be situated at a distant place. I mean, in West Bengal, it may be in Asansol or in Calcutta or in Siliguri, somewhere, maybe in Asansol or in Calcutta. So that you have a few exchange lines from your local exchange to the bigger exchange. Okay. These lines are called as trunk lines. Trunk lines a few trunk lines. are available and the cost of your permanent line connection from user number 1 to local exchange is something if it is a unit 1 the cost for maintaining one trunk line between the local exchange to the distant bigger exchange is much higher. So that you do not have a one to one permanent connectivity okay? and that kind of permanent connectivity is a useless of resource because all of us will not be talking I mean simultaneously for all the time really. So the arrangement is for a cost effective design only a few number of lines are available from this local exchange beyond that point really. and to reach Mumbai this signal will go from local exchange to another exchange which is I mean, there are various names for them really, toll quality exchange and other exchanges and ultimately it is routed to your uh, local exchange from where you have a permanent connection for the destination user. Okay. Now then multiplexing should be used somewhere in the exchange here. You have a few lines, okay. let me say 24 on outgoing lines from your exchange. You have 10,000 subscribers here and if you take a, some kind of study, if you make a study, you will find that out of 20, I mean say 10,000 users, how many of them at a given point of time will need this outgoing connection and you have to allocate so many number of lines there. That is, this study is something statistical, probabilistic, lot of work is done in this area and a certain number is arrived at and is devoted. In spite of that, sometimes you get an engage stone, call blocking. You find that okay, no outgoing call can be routed because this trunk line is not available anyway. So, it is here where multiplexing makes sense. So, it is not that coming back to his point, it is not that all these 24 users have to talk. In fact, this 24, I mean 24 lines that I was talking about is open here, depending on who has a demand at that moment, okay, his line is routed to this input point of this multiplexing. So, S1 sometimes may come from you, sometimes may come from your friend. Is that okay? So, that on the whole, 
provision for 24 lines multiplexing is made in the exchange and there will be 24 outgoing lines from here. So, at the next level if you just think a little bit say 24 lines will come from Hisley if this is a KGP exchange, KGP also has got a bigger exchange ok. 24 lines if comes from your Hisley exchange there are few other local exchanges many I mean a few tens of them really will come from other local exchange somewhere ok. So, in all there will be a good number of uh, lines coming to KGP and from KGP outward again to the next higher level of exchange you will not find n into 24 lines a smaller number of lines there. But here at KGP exchange you have a need for multiplexing bunch of 24 lines coming from various local exchanges ok. That is the next level of multiplexing I will briefly talk about. Even speed, yes even higher speed you are correct. Uh, and one at a time. Yes. Would there be any rejection given to the Like they say that we are not going to, we like, we have, we are using all our lines, we cannot give your truck line. Right. Is there any cases like that? Okay. Okay. Now actually, I mean, failure at the top level and then coming in. Yeah, failure can occur. This line blockage can occur at any level. But a lot of uh, design uh, etc is taken up so that this blockage is minimized as much as possible. Yes, this blockage this is 100 lines are getting blocked. See block at the top level. That should not happen really. That should not happen. A group of so lines. The front, front line of will carry uh, not even single telephone but. Uh, yeah. So the, so the trunk line is not usually blocked because this is a permanent connection from the local exchange to the next exchange. Do you get me? There is another big issue which I am not mentioning is that of switching. The overall blocking is not only because of trunk line basically because of the switches. Everywhere you will have you will need some switches and that switches also may bring in some kind of blockage etc. Yeah. Pardon? Right. That is multiplexing is not necessary because all local users are permanently connected to the exchange. So, what is necessary is the switching. Okay, you dial a number for the called party. So, depending on that number your line is switched to that other one. So, what you need is a switch. What you need at a higher levels of exchanges is a switch as well as this trunk lines and multiplexing units. So, let us stop here today. We will continue with this perhaps on next Monday. Thank you.